Hey there everyone, welcome back to another video. Kovac here, and for this one going to be starting a bit of a new series in the form of uh, doing top three best pets for uh, PvP pet battles per family type. Starting out with uh, good old humanoids, with number three being Wormy Tunkins. Now, I'll explain why pretty much after the battle because I have to kind of focus, but um... Yeah, number three, we've got Tunkins here, so he's got triple undead. Kind of unfortunate to see, but we will go ahead and start out with Tunkins. As I can reduce a lot of this damage. I think what I want to do first is actually go for Burp. And the reason why is because if I would have went for the one thing first, uh, he would have got that up. I would have went for Burp, and then I would have had less of a round duration for that. Not only that, but now that I go for Jar, I'll deny two of his dreadful breaths. So, pretty smart thinking right there. <laughs> so, so far so good. I'm going to be able to reduce a, a lot of damage from this Blight Breath. Thanks, Tunkins. Now, some people may be a little surprised to see him at number three. As a lot of people may expect him to be number two, but I will explain why after this battle because I feel like there is one pet that outdoes Warby Tonka just a little bit and it also is pretty underrated too and I'll show you in just a second look at that pitiful damage that that Blight Breath did take that so that's one pet out of the way I think the only other worry we have here is Widget to be honest because he is faster than Tonkins. Alright, even though the weather is up, still gonna go for that burp as it is hard hitting. Once again, dreadful breath, boring. You're just gonna keep doing dreadful breaths. I can just reduce that damage as well as do a lot of damage back to you. And I may end up just soloing his whole team with just Tonkins, which I am okay with because I don't really like uh, just, you know, the constant spam of dreadful breath. Especially the Blight Breath, which is a really great undead pet, I must admit. Alright, one more punch. Punch you in the face. Boom. Oh, my poor Anomalous with that low health pool. He is getting whittled down little by little. Now, the Kuchong back there is basically tanking it like a champ. Because, I mean, he takes weak damage from it, despite that little crit that he got right there. <coughs> Oh, another crit. Well, whatever. It's only 31 health. Alright, last but not least, we have the problem child, as I said. Would be Widget. Okay, kind of glad that he changed the weather there. Because now I don't have to worry about uh, less of duration of my poison. However, I could have potentially missed, which would have sucked a lot. Okay, we got that on him. We are now faster. So if he does have pounce, which 90% of them do, uh, it won't do the extra damage. <clears throat> I think from here I just simply have to hit him and then I will win. Okay, as long as this poison fang lands, we win. And boop, good job Kunchong. Okay, he might go for a Spectral Strike, but I'm not going to let him kill my Kunchong. But nope, he uh, he fled. I was just going to swap out and let my Kunchong live. Because I really like that pet. So anyway, yeah, Wormy Tunkins. I have him at number 3. He, uh, I mean, there's no surprise that he was even in the top 3. Jar Smell Liquid, too darn good. Especially if you're faster. He's uh, relatively easy to get as well. Uh, you can get them from either yourself from archaeology or, you know, the uh, more straightforward way is buying them off the auction house. Prices will vary, but nowadays I don't think he costs as much as he used to back in Legion. So, yeah, pretty great pet. As long as you don't run Jar, I mean, <laughs> not Jar, Dread of Full Breath, then uh, you sh will be doing good because Jar is just too good to pass up. Uh, Jar of Full Breath isn't that great on him, to be honest. Uh, you can either run Corrosion or Punch, both are pretty great. Uh, and then I have seen some run Nether Gate. I guess it's okay if you have Jar Smith Liquid up first. 
but burp is definitely the way to go 90% of the time. So yeah, there we go. Number three is Wormy Tunkins. <clears throat> now number two, let's go ahead and uh, get them out. I only, I didn't even have a competitive team with it at first, but it's the uh, SS Breed Kiarji Gardling. So as soon as I uh, tried to record the video the first time, I had to stop because I didn't have a uh, team with it at first. And why was that at Lash? But anyway, Kiarji Gardling, the SS Breed, very great pet, very underrated as I've said. You don't say it very often, but I've heard many people complain about it. It is just very good. Um, I mean, back then, a lot of people would consider just a tier two pet, but nowadays people are talking about this pet being very, very strong. So definitely think it's tier one nowadays, far better than the idol. I think it's just a little better than the, uh, than the Tunkins, largely due to the speed, the little interrupt, or I mean, stun, it's not an interrupt. Those are two different things. Uh, Sandstorm counters uh, the Tunkins just a little bit. If he is running his little dot, then obviously you want to run Crush. I don't really think you'd uh, get a whole lot of value out of doing Whirlwind right there. Then that way you won't have a spammable attack. Uh, not only that, but you know the Humanoid ratio is always great, healing up every time he does damage. And I just have them compared up with two power powered pets actually that uh, should suit him quite well as far as helping him out. <coughs> but yeah, KRG Garling, very good pet. Now, obviously, I do not have Merc a lot, otherwise, he would for sure probably be number one on this top three list. But I didn't, I didn't think I'd include, you know promotional pets like that anyway because not everybody's going to have it so I'm going to just include pets that uh, pretty much anybody can get uh, number one is going to be a no-brainer I'm pretty sure everyone and their mom their mom's dog and their dogs puppies can already tell what number one is going to be but we'll get there as soon as we get there assuming that we get this cue to pop soon <coughs> It is critter event, so this is a pretty great time to go ahead and uh, hopefully knock out this little bit of a series that I have here. I'm probably going to try and go in order from left to right. That way I don't leave out any family type. Because I think I accidentally left out one whenever I was doing a uh, family brawler. I think it was elementals actually. It was kind of funny, but I did go back and get it done. <laughs> Let's go ahead and hop into this next battle. Oh, Kiarji Garling, as far as getting it goes, it's a wild caught pet. It has to be summer, and you just, you know, go over to AQ40, and they're all over the place. They have every breed available to it, and the SS breed is the one that you want, so it might be a bit of a pickle to find. Oh, a Wicked Lurker. Never gone against that pet before, but I have seen it in action before. I think with uh, I think Roscoe was playing it or something, but it's a pretty cool pet. I would not mind having that pet. So Squirky, the Lurker, and then Bone Shard. Oh, nice. He started out with Squirky. I would love to take out this pet as soon as possible. And it is quite annoying. Now, usually, what you want to do, if you are faster, go ahead and go for that Blackout Kick. Go for a Crush first. And the reason why, and I know a couple other people will tell you, is because if you went for a sandstorm first, it will not only reduce your hit chance, but also the damage that you would do with your crush. It's just a, a little thing, you know, just help you get extra damage. I have seen other people do it in the past as well. So, yeah. Oh, and if he has, well, I'm assuming he has bone storm at least on one of these tiers, it will do less damage. Not only that, but I can just heal them all up with my little haunting song. Oh, <laughs> he went for an ice spike under sandstorm. What is that, like a 40% hit chance or something? <clears throat> That's pretty funny. Oh, missed the third one. I don't understand why you're just spamming that. I mean, I mean, you could, I guess, do a bone storm. It's not going to do a whole lot of damage, but 
I mean, it's better than nothing. Oh, it looks like I missed right there. Just barely faster than the Lurker, although he has plenty of ways to make himself faster. I'll just stay in on my ghost pup. Okay, tentacle slap. He's saving that bubble back there on on the squirky. I'm not sure why. Um, do you have feed? Oh yeah, you totally have feed. Okay, cool. So I go for a scratch into a ghostly bite, getting off a lot of damage. And then his team will almost be dead. It would be smart for him to go ahead and go into a Squirky right now. Alright. He might just go for another bubble. Which if he does, then I mean, it's whatever. His team is almost dead. Uh, my team can definitely take him out from here. Okay, there goes another bubble. I'm just going to keep going for the attacks right here. But boom. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish him off. I don't want him to potentially land a nice spike. So this way I'm reducing his hit chance for any of these as well as his damage. So he's doing less damage with that. Oh, did that have to crit? <laughs> did that have to crit? I definitely want to make sure I hit him right here because that should still proc my racial. And he actually landed a nice spike, surprisingly enough. But I was smart enough to go ahead and get the sandstorm up for that. Let's go ahead and go for my stun right here. I missed, which is very unfortunate. Let's go into my autumnal sproutling right here. <gasps> oh crap, I forgot that he had that. Oh dang. Okay, well... I can't miss, so I'm going to go for a club first, hoping that he just keeps going for that. Nice. And then go for my Fist of the Forest. No! He went in the Squirky. Oh, you got to be kidding me. You've got to be freaking kidding me. Dang. <clears throat> if it wasn't for that miss with that Blackout Kick. Ah, Squirky, another very good humanoid pet, but definitely not the top three. Oh, well that crate, uh, I was about to say crate, that crit basically sealed my fate. This uh, guy had a lot of lucky things going for him, but oh well. Still though, I'm pretty sure I should have won that. Uh, I mean, the main thing he had going for him, to be honest, let's face it, was that Squirky. Which is very annoying. He barely did anything on it. He just kept uh, swapping it in with its stupid bubble. The ring it up and then swapping out. Uh, kind of a little scaredy cat. I could have said something much worse than that. But I'm just going to say that. Uh, but uh, Wicked Lurker is definitely a pretty cool pet. I wish I had it. I completely forgot about the tentacle slap. I was going to come in there. Go for maybe a nature's award or whatever. I know that thing completely took me out. Ay ay ay. Let's see if we go against him again. Oh no, it's actually that uh triple undead guy again. Well, it's gonna be pretty great for my Frostwolf Ghost Pup, that is for sure. Should I just go all out with him or maybe the KRG because of the uh the whole acid rain and dreadful breath. I think that might be the better route to go. So yeah, go for our stun. And go for crush first. That way you get extra damage. Obviously gonna wait for him to go for acid rain. <clears throat> Ooh, why did that have to crit? Why'd that do so much damage even for a crit? Cause I think a crit is supposed to be 50% of the damage that it normally would have done added to uh you know the regular damage but why the hell is it over 300 that is ridiculous it's just a simple aoe it shouldn't have done that much damn damage oh well let's just keep going for crushes oh did not take him out right there but this sandstorm definitely is helping me out oh and he runs away nice 
Well, I'm kind of glad about that. I mean, I'm pretty sure I would have won no matter what, but just the fact that he ran. All right, now for number one, which everyone freaking knew, is the Fiendish Imp. Now, like I said, it would have been Merkelite if I had it, but uh, obviously I don't have it, so. Yeah, the Fiendish Imp have quite a bit of teams with it. It is a very, very OP pet, as many already know but I don't think I want to play something that's very very strong but let's go for rotten chirps <clears throat> oops go and do this now fiendish imp obviously everyone should have saw this coming just a very damn good pet very easy to get if you can't get it to drop in a karazhan old karazhan that is it's from the little boss that's behind a little bookshelf He's a little uh, satyr. Um, I mean, he does have three breeds available to it, so even if it does drop, it could drop one of the other crap breeds. <laughs> obviously, you want the SS breed, that way you can take advantage of its nether gate. And uh, obviously, you want to take immolation on it. Uh, and then the alternative is buying it off the auction house because nowadays it's kind of dirt cheap. Uh, let's see, let's just go for Rotten Little Helper, yeah. Rotten Little Helper it is then. Yeah, it's pretty dirt cheap nowadays and they will pretty much always be in demand because it is a very good pet. And if they were ever to nerf it, I don't know how they would because, I mean, what can you do? Put Immolation and Netigate on the same tier or something? That's about the only thing I can really think of. And he is getting some very, very lucky crits, despite not having his weather up right there. That is kind of in a shame, if I say so myself. But thanks to my little weather changer right here, it is reducing a lot of the damage. I'm going to go ahead and go for this. Well, boom. And if we're able to get another minefield down, then I think this is pretty much a wrap. Because all of my pet, well, my other two pets are faster. I wasn't going to say all of them. And ba boom. All right, let's go for another minefield. Oh, he's just gonna keep going for dreadful breaths. Okay. All right, one more ice lance, and you shall go down, scourge whelpling. Oh man, I am very, very sorry for the sniffling, but uh, as some may already know, I am not feeling all that well. So again, my humblest apologies. Let's go for another one of those. He's going to go for that. And now all we have left is Widget. It's still Blizzard, so this obviously has a 100% chance to hit. Probably going to go for Darkness, which I'm going to change right away. And if he doesn't go for Darkness, then this is going to do extra damage. So either way, I would have been in a pretty great spot with going for it. Let's see if he'll still go for it. Oh, nope. Well, it looks like he will go down right here. Oh, boom. Unfortunately, did not get to bring out the Fiendish Imp right there. And he runs away. Yeah, unfortunately wasn't able to show off the Imp. As, although, a lot of people already know how the Imp works, but... I reckon we can maybe do another battle. We haven't even hit the uh, the 20 minute mark, so. <clears throat> you know, more battles the better. Hopefully get to go against some other people besides the same uh, triple undead, double dreadful breath. But yeah, uh, Fiendish Shimp, obviously a no brainer. Obviously wanna go with Burn, Immolation, Delegate, that is the moves set to go with any of the other three are very very bad so there's something wrong if you uh if you go for any of the other three well unfortunately we get paired up against the same fellow alrighty then well I guess we just rinse and repeat because if I don't then he's ultimately going to take me down He's wising up just a little bit. He's going for sleeping gases now. 
Oh, he doesn't even have... Oh, I was about to say, I thought maybe he got rid of Jerk of Death, but I forgot that it's on the first tier. Well, what are you going to do now? Are you going to go for Jerkful Breath or your Acid Rain? Aw, oh, he passed. What a pansy. Come on now. Come on now. Why would you pass? That's like the little sissy thing to do. Come on. Wow. <clears throat> I mean, you could have done something, but just the fact that you did that is kind of hilarious. Just so I don't change the weather. I mean, it's going to get changed regardless. So, I mean, you do that all you want. Literally do it all you want. I mean, you're not going to get that much AoE, to be honest. Not only that, but I'm going to change the weather on you. <coughs> Just because you want to be annoying and uh, pass like that. I mean, yeah, he doesn't get an ability in. But I know why he did it. Just to be annoying like that. Go for another minefield, and this is pretty much a wrap. Ah, oh, he changed the weather. Poor baby. Okay, well, let's just go ahead and let him sack off my rotten little helper. Or maybe not. He's not going to do that. <clears throat> Alright, Golden Chirper, come on in now, since he wants to be like that. Boom, boom. I would prefer the third hit right there, Golden Chirper. Going to be completely honest right there. That way he'd be on his undead turn right now. Okay, well, at least by the time he dies, darkness will go away. So he does have to throw it up for his widget. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and still go for my heal. I, mean, I don't really have anything better to do. Yes, it is reduced, but... Still a decent heal nonetheless. And boom. Okay, kind of hoping for a triple hit right here. Boom, boom. Are you serious right now? Oh well, well he didn't go for Call Darkness like I thought he would, so it's whatever. I think that, uh, uh, let's see. I think I win. Do I? I don't think Call Darkness does enough damage to kill me. He has to go for a Spectral Strike and hope it lands. And nope, he was not able to kill me. Thank goodness, I thought I was going to lose against him. <clears throat> Very glad I didn't, so yeah. Got to see a little bit of the Imp there at the end, but uh, unfortunately not a whole lot. But uh, yeah, I think that might do it right there because I'm afraid I may just keep queuing into him but I uh, will just go ahead and do a little bit of a run through so number three we do have Wormy Tunkins now uh, Wormy Tunkins obviously for Jar Smell and Liquid and his burp as long as you're faster you will be able to get this off that way they do 50% uh, less damage to you as well as have 50% less speed also hits pretty damn hard for a one round cooldown very good pet right here a lot of people hate it uh, and it's pretty easy to get number two we did have the guardling uh, let's see where is it at yes that's breed that is again wild caught does need to be summertime and sell of this they are all around the little aq40 you know raid or whatever uh, but the only trouble is it does have all breeds available to it so you may be out there for a little while Depending on if maybe you get lucky or whatever and find the SS free right off the bat. Very good pet. Pretty underrated, but a lot of people will agree that it is pretty darn good. And then obviously we do have the Fiendish Imp. Uh, like I said, obviously a no-brainer. It's just a damn good pet. A lot of people hate it. A lot of people will hate you for playing with it. I myself don't really like playing with it a whole lot. It's just mainly, you know, for the top three lists. Uh, burn Immolation Nether Gate. You probably shouldn't stray away from uh, those particular abilities. All these other ones are pretty garbage compared to uh, his true potential with this build. And I guess for the little honorable mention, we do have Merc a lot. But of course, I don't have it. And I don't feel like paying hundreds of dollars just to get it. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people already know how good it is. 
So yeah, I think that will wrap it up for this one. Again, uh, top three best tier one pets for humanoids as far as PvP pet battles go. Now obviously all of this was opinionated. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will agree. <clears throat> but uh, I mean, if you do disagree, feel free to let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one as we uh, continue on with the other family types. This is Kovac, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.